Hello and welcome back to the Road to KSP2. It is episode 50. We are finally here. We're halfway through. It's quite amazing and I can't wait to even go maybe even to episode 100. Anyway, we're starting off with the X1. Uh, it's a uh, experimental airplane. Uh, it's under the nickname uh, the Taipan, which if you didn't know is the most deadly snake in the world. I just thought it would be a cool name. And it's an SSTO. Yeah, this episode we're only doing SSTOs. That's that's like all we're doing. And there's a reason for that. It's uh, I just wanted to do some simple things today. Well, I told you that, uh, well, if you look down in the description, there is a mod list. Yes, I have finally put in a mod list. It's It's been insane. And I'll try and make it so it's on every single episode from now on. It'll just be there. Uh, it's not a huge amount of mods, but it is enough. I also updated to the newest version of, uh, the newest version of KSP, which took a lot. I actually had to remove some mods, uh, because just a couple of them just no longer are compatible. And yeah, uh, that allowed me to download the new parallax mod and some other visual enhancements. That's why it looks a little bit better. Um, I'm having trouble with the configs for waterfall and EVE environmental enhancements, and it's probably my fault. Uh, if you guys know how to deal with that in any way, that would be helpful. Um, I also definitely need to get the fly-by-wire uh, thing in, in here, because I am very bad at flying when I'm just pressing buttons on my keyboard. Anyway, here we are, we're coming in at a landing with Jeb, and yes, this is the first time a pilot has returned from space on an SSTO and survived the landing. The Yeah, the other one wasn't a pilot, he was a <laughs> mechanic who decided to steal a plane. Yeah, it's fine. Anyway, we're going to taxi all the way over here to in front of the hangar, just because I thought it would be a fun idea. Yeah, and I fell it over and it came back up. Anyway, uh, thank you guys for like all of the support over the last month. We've gained almost 100 subscribers since last month and it's been awesome, like thank you. And I would love it for you guys to keep up the same sort of support and to do that, it would be like, comment, share, subscribe, do whatever you want. And here we are, oh wait, no, this is the Taipan. Oh shoot, I don't know what the last one's name was. I think it was probably like the Cobra or something. No, the other one of these is the Cobra, yeah, whatever. It's fine. Uh, so yeah, we are launching our X2. This one is the Taipan and it is on its way into space. It has that nice ramjet and those two rapier engines right up there on the back. And it's it goes fast, it goes quite fast. And the mission of today is to recreate the picture that is in the thumbnail. That picture has inspired me to do this. Uh, yeah. it. I just thought it would be a cool thing to show off for this episode, while I also have some other announcements for you. Uh, I am going to release reels of our missions, uh, basically starting from the first mission all the way till now, uh, and you'll get to see just how much crazy random stuff that has happened. Anyway, here's the X2 Cobra, which is another X2 space plane. Uh, and it's designed exactly the same and it's going to fly. I don't know why I had to click out of there for that second, but I, I'll leave it in. And yeah, basically I keep it at about only a five to 10, per, uh, 10 degree incline all the way into space until we get high enough in the atmosphere where I just need to really take advantage of the lifting effect by pulling up really hard. And that, that helps. I don't know how it helps. It seems to help to me. And I'm probably doing it wrong and maybe it's even hurting the performance, but that then that just shows how strong these crafts are. Yeah. So look at those massive Delta wings. They are huge. Anyway, here we are uh, about to do our first burn, which will circularize us around the planet this is quite amazing, isn't it? 
there we go. There's the circularization. And then we have to change our uh, overall height because if we don't, then it'll take us, uh, I believe it was like three months to get an encounter if we didn't do that, which is just insane. There's no reason why we would need to be up there for three months. That's insane. Yeah. All right. So, uh, yeah, so I'm going to be doing uh, Instagram reels. Uh, I'm going to create an Instagram account for my YouTube and I'm going to make Instagram reels. And I am also going to be make, uh, I'm also going to be posting shorts of all of the things. Uh, I know I just repeated this. This is just me repeating what I said earlier, but it's going to be of this and of my new series that is going to be starting up in a couple of days. Yes, it'll be starting this weekend and it is going to be an RP1 RSS slash whatever the rest of the thing is. It's just going to be a uh, real solar system, real progression, all of that. And it's going to be, it's going to be fun. It's going to, it's going to be pretty fun. Uh, I just need to know what starting country you would like me to start out as. And yes, we're only about a kilometer away from the other, uh, the other rocket or the other space plane. Uh, yeah, it's, it's going to be a pretty cool, cool mission. Look at how well the parallax and all of that makes the ground look. Wow. I am so glad I upgraded. Uh, yeah. Okay, so now we're starting our final approach to the, I believe, the Taipan. We're currently uh, piloting the Cobra. Valentina's piloting the, uh, the Cobra with Bob Kerman in the passenger seat. There, I pulled out a uh, docking alignment indicator. It's such a helpful mod, especially when you can't really like do all the quick turns and things like that that you could normally do in... Uh, in like a more lazy method of docking. I uh, just did a small little time warp there so we could get over much quicker. There's the uh, KSC down there on the ground. Uh, that's pretty cool. I, I didn't realize that when I was doing it. I was really, really preoccupied with the docking here and look at them. They're right there. They're both really large, large space planes. Uh, I mean, space planes for what they can do. I believe they can hold, uh, I think it's six people each. Yeah, they can both hold six people. And I think, no, actually they can't. No, yeah, yeah, they can. They can both hold six people. Uh, no, 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 they can't. Never mind. They can't hold six people. They can only hold two people. And, I'm be and I believe I'm going to make a another SSTO in like the next episode that can uh, actually carry cargo into space. Uh, yeah, because we need to build a new space station. Uh, the old one, it was deleted when I deleted the, what is the, the mod with the antennas, uh, real, not a real antenna, but the other one. Oh yeah, I was trying to get inside the engine. I thought it'd be funny. Uh, I just did like a quick little, uh, you know, circle around the whole ship and then I got Jet back inside and yeah, it's pretty cool that we were able to dock these together. Uh, I've never been, I've, I really have never really done anything with uh, space planes. These are actually like my own, my third in total sex, successful uh, SSTOs. Nothing else has been ever successful for me. Uh, so this is actually pretty cool to me. All right, so Jeb and Bill are on their way back down. This is the, uh, this is, you know, the first, they were the first up, so they're gonna be the first down. So th that both people, uh, both groups can get a pretty good time in space. And uh, I was, I was trying to see how well I can slow it down. I put some uh, arrow brakes up on the top and that kind of worked. And then I had to activate the engine because we are very far back from the KSC. And this thing just breaks the sound barrier like nobody's business. Like we can get up 
above a thousand meters per second like it's nothing. I took a little time to look in the uh, cockpit there to see if you could see the runway. And yes, you could. It's kind of hard to see the runway with uh, with uh, parallax on. Like it, it's kind of hard. Like I, I couldn't see it, but it parallax and all of the trees and all this stuff like that, it just makes it worth it. And I can't wait to do some more exploring around the solar system. And here we are coming in pretty quickly, I might add. Uh, thank, thankfully, I was able to bring it down at, before the end of the runway. And we are going to taxi all the way back to the hangar. Uh, yeah, we're going to taxi all the way back to the hangar and just slowly bring ourselves in so we can get Jeb and Bill out for their photo op once they... Uh, <laughs> once they get everything down uh once they well i think once bill and bob get down yep there they go they're gonna walk out there and look at this what is this it's crew five yes it launched earlier today this is crew five uh this is real this is uh from uh this is from literally several hours ago at the time of me doing this and uh at the time of publishing this will be from the same day as the time of publishing this is crew five it's i just thought it was cool i can see rocket launches outside my back window well actually this is my back window this is my porch you can see them out on my porch like all the time it's not a porch it's a balcony whatever yeah here it is that's that's literally four people going up to space yeah that's so cool i love living in orlando it's it's awesome I mean, I could see things from uh, from my old town, but like, not like this. It's better here. Anyway, uh, this is the X2 Cobra. Cobra. It's currently orbiting Kerbin with Valentina and uh, Bill? Bob? Yeah, Val Valentina and Bob. Now, this one, I believe I was a little bit more successful with the deorbiting. I feel like I did it much better than the other time. I feel like... Uh, I was just able to keep it not more steady because holy shit that was <laughs> not great but uh, here we are we're coming in uh, I have the RCS still on I didn't really need it still on but it was kind of helping um, I kept the arrow brakes on just to slow ourselves down enough so that we aren't crashing uh, yeah, or going in too fast on the runway, because I was kind of scared of that after the last time. And uh, I had to... It has a problem when it's empty. I feel like the the weight gets way too far up in the front, so it has a hard time lifting. Uh, yeah, it's, it's an issue. But anyway, here we are coming in for a even better landing than the first time. Here we are just taking our little turn into the taxiway. And here I am still accidentally using the, uh, the, uh, what is it? The oxidizer mode. And it was providing way too much thrust and I had to get away from there. And yeah, it was, whoops. Yeah. Here we are, we're parking it right next to it, right at sunset. They have had a good day making Kerbal history with the first SSTOs to dock in orbit. What legends. Look at them. Give them a round of applause because that is the end of episode 50 and I'll see you guys.